welcome to Mando Bug Cracks episode 40. I am your host Mando Bug, also known as Amanda. Welcome new viewers and thank you for coming back returning viewers even though it's been like two weeks since I recorded. <laughs> you know that really took me by surprise because I knew I missed at least a week but I, I hadn't realized it had already been two weeks. Time is really flying for me. I got a lot of stuff going on outside my crafting world so Sorry, it's been a little while. So why don't we start out with something I've learned. This is something that I learned a couple weeks ago, but I didn't even mention it to you guys. So I thought I would go ahead and bring it up since, you know, might as well. So I do quite a bit of cross stitch from time to time. And so here's an older cross stitch project that I've done. You may have seen it in the past, the snowman. And then most recently I've been working on the mysterious Halloween Town Club from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Now these two projects um, have been quite different for me because of the fabric that they're on. So the snowman was stitched on Ada. Now see if I can get close enough to where you can actually see the holes. Maybe by his face because he's cute. So with Ada, um, you have these giant holes and the weave is a lot bigger than on my other project which is linen. So on Ada, you're going to go ahead and stitch from hole to hole to make your X's. Which is pretty straightforward and makes counting very easy. The only thing is it is very big so it is very noticeable um, that there's holes in your fabric. The bigger the design of course, the further away you'll look at it and you won't notice the holes. But with linen, I don't even know if I can get close enough for you to see. Oh yeah, I can. Okay. So with linen, tiny, tiny, tiny little holes. And with linen, instead of stitching from hole to hole, you skip a hole. And that makes counting a little more difficult. So um, I can't really show you um, without it being confusing. But I can definitely link to a tutorial on the difference between stitching on Ada and linen. But I really like the look of linen better because you don't see all the holes that you see in the Ada. So it's a lot better, especially for smaller projects, because you can look up real close and still barely see the holes in the fabric. So the only thing is it is a little bit more difficult to count. Um, when you first start out on linen, um, it can be a little bit of a headache because you are kind of like getting used to the holes being smaller. And even now, I've uh, stitched this far on linen. This is my very first linen project. I'm still like this when I cross stitch. It's like this close to my face. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Whereas with the Ada, I can have it comfortably out of my lap as I stitch. So, um, but I do, I do really like the result better on the linen. And uh, one thing I find interesting is a lot of patterns um, will still end up being the same size because you're stitching, you're skipping holes on the linen. So if you use 28 count linen and 28 count Ada, your finished project, your finished project will be the same size in height and width because, I mean, the nature of stitching on linen, you skip stitches. So I thought that was really cool too. So, um, if you like cross stitch, but you don't like the way it looks on Ada, you can always try linen. Unless it hurts your eyes, then it might be hard for you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, speaking of the Frosted Pumpkin Citrus Mysterious Halloween Town Club, Clue 2 has come out, and I have done this much and this much. <laughs> well, and I guess this post. This post wasn't part of the last update. And I started stitching grass across before I finished the post and then I realized, oh, I only have one line of this post. Whoops. So I had to pull it all out, finish the post, and then I was like, well, I might as well add the branch and go back and add some of that. So I still have to finish, I think, some of this one. And But there's a really cute little house over here with a jack-o'-lantern and I'm really excited to work on it. I've just been working on other projects. So that takes me to my works in progress. Um, I finally picked up, let's see, finally picked up these guys. 
Oh yeah, so some of you might recognize this as my Mystic Spiral Socks. Um, I'm knitting them on US size zeros out of some hand dyed self striping, my very first self striping yarn that turned out to be um, a fun and interesting experience um, with not the not the best results but I'm still happy with them. So I think I've showed you my first finished sock already in an older episode and you can see because, because of the way I dyed the yarn I have white spots. There are white spots in my dye job. Oh well! And uh, the stripes aren't even because I didn't measure them evenly but I'm happy my first time and you know you're, you're not gonna be perfect on the first time unless you're like a prodigy and I'm definitely not so um, I'm just a couple inches below oh, oh my God, that's just stray um, I'm just a couple inches below starting for the heel so uh, I think this has been going pretty well um, except for on the back I uh, I forgot that last time I was doing these um, I did them differently, um, these stitches here, when you come back off of knitting diagonally. I won't give anything away because it's a paid for pattern, but uh, I did them differently so now you have these like lines. I know what I did wrong, so, oh well, not a super big deal and hopefully uh, that will end up on the bottom. I'm not sure because it depends on, oh yeah, it looks like it will end up on the bottom because they're opposite. But uh, I'm very much enjoying this. I don't remember if I said that the pattern's by Josh Ricks, but I absolutely love this pattern. Genius. Um, and then I've also still been working on converting that cross stitch for my grandma. Uh, takes quite a bit of time, um, but I finally got like most of it, at least the parts where you do the back stitching uh, outlined, so I now know how big it's going to be. Can I you see it all? <laughs> this is how big it's going to be. It's going to be huge. <laughs> so uh, I've been working on that for her. And I so I've got all the outlines done. And I just need to start coloring in the color. And then once I have it all colored in, I'm going to wrap up the balls of yarn for her to go ahead and stitch this with. So, um, so in case you didn't see last week's episode, this is a cross stitch pattern that I have been transferring onto monk's cloth for my grandma, um, just to make it easier for her to cross stitch since her hands are a little more fragile and her eyes aren't the sharpest. <laughs> um, moving on to check it out. So for check it out this week, um, I wanted to talk about a new cross stitch sampler mystery stitch along <laughs> that's coming out. Um, I, I'm a, I have a thing for this mystery thing. As long as it's got a theme that I like and it's a designer that I know that I like, I'm in. <laughs> so uh, the theme, of course, is a Halloween one. So I think I've shared with you guys in the past about Cloud's Factory. They are a cross stitch creating company, <laughs> producing company, and they have a stitch along sampler, Halloween sampler, coming out, um, sorry my words are escaping me, <laughs> um, it's called Wacky Witches in Stitches Halloween Sampler, and it is $16.99, which is, uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of expensive, um, but it's a weekly update that comes out in August 25th. Um, I'm not, I don't think I saw when it runs till, but uh, there are some sneak peek photos on their website. Maybe I can add one of them in here. into cross stitch and you're into Halloween like I am, go check out. I know I will be purchasing it and stitching along starting on the 25th. Now clues for the Frosted Pumpkins stitcheries Halloween stitch along will still be coming out so I will have a lot of cross stitching to be doing. <laughs> I'm gonna keep myself busy. So uh, moving on to current events. Oh and just to let you know I skip finished objects <laughs> because I'm gonna talk about them later in current events. 
So, current events. <laughs> I currently am hosting a mindful spin along on Ravelry. Go ahead and check it out in the group for details if you're interested. But basically, you're just trying to, to have a plan ahead of time of what your goal is to spin. You know, what weight are you going after? How many yards are you going after? Do you even know what you want to knit with it when it's done? That kind of a thing. So there will be prizes. I don't have them yet. <laughs> I plan on getting them real soon though. I do. I really do. At least, I'm going to have at least two prizes. So um, you're going to want to join if you spin. Especially since Tour de Fleece is going on. So that's another current event. And I think that's what I've really been participating in the most. So, um, since I last spoke with you guys, I made this calendar on, I don't know, some free calendar making website, the Tour de Fleece 2014. And on there, I just kind of wrote, you know, my goal was to spin for at least 10 minutes. So I wrote, did I spin for 10 minutes? And then how much did I actually end up spinning? Because I really am curious about what kind of stats I'm going to get out of Tour de Fleece. So as you can tell, this is today. Well, maybe not if you're watching this after I load it, but um, rest day, yay! No spinning for me today. But as you can maybe see, yesterday I spun for almost three and a half hours. <laughs> so um, I definitely did that knowing there would be a rest today. And that means I can get some more stitching done on my Halloween town. But um, I've, really, I've really been enjoying Tour de Fleece. So far, I've learned that I can find 10 minutes a day to spin. It's a little harder on my work days when I have stuff to do outside of work. The nature of my schedule right now is I work three 12-hour days and a 6-hour day. So on those 12-hour days, I have like zero free time. Um, but I usually find a way to sneak in 10 minutes when I wake up or before I go to bed or if I'm lucky on my lunch break. So, um, but on those dumb work days when I actually have stuff like errands to run, it was nearly impossible. But, um, for the most part, I can find time to spend every day, which, um, I really enjoyed realizing because I don't think I really knew that before. So, what have I been doing? Well, I finished spinning my Bollywood bats from, where's my notes, from Wooden Spinner Fibers by Brenda. She was a local bat maker <laughs> in Alabama, and when I talked to her, she said most of the time she sells out locally and doesn't have a chance to sell anything online. So um, I don't think she has a shop, or if she does, it's empty. <laughs> you know, I'll look and see if she does have one and if there's anything in it, and I'll link to it in the show notes, which you can find the link to them uh, under the description of the YouTube video, or you can go to mandobugcrafts.blogspot.com, and that's where the actual links are. So anyways, I finished the two bats. Uh, before Tour de Fleece, I had one single, one set of singles done on the bobbins, on the bobbin, and then I spun up the other single and then I plied them during Tour de Fleece. So here are my two skeins of the Bollywood bat. And I am absolutely happy with this fiber. Oh my goodness. It is so squish and fluffy. It's a Merino BFL Silk Angelina blend. And uh, what I really like about it is it's a truly woolen yarn. So I spun this bat, supported long draw, and it is so squish. It is so squish. So um, I'm just absolutely happy and I feel like this yarn has like the perfect amount of tweed. It's like subtle tweed. And I love the glitter. And I love the color. And I just love love love. Love love love. So these two skeins together is 204 ounces for um, 3 point... no. 200, 204 ounces. Ah! <laughs> No way. It's 204 yards from 3.6 ounces. So I got worsted weight yarn here. And if you remember, I was telling you guys I wanted to knit a baby cardigan with this yarn. The cardigan I wanted to knit needed like 280 yards. And I knew it was going to be a stretch to try to reach that, especially in the worsted weight gauge. So I, I did not meet my goal in that aspect, but I had a feeling that wouldn't happen. I did meet my goal of worsted weight, and this guy's trying to come undone. So, scratch the idea for a baby cardigan. Um, 
I'm thinking maybe that I want to knit this into something for me to wear and if I have scraps I can make maybe a baby hat with it. So I find orange to be a gender neutral color since we don't know the gender yet still. Um, which is which can be frustrating because I'm 17 weeks now and in my last appointment they could have done an ultrasound and we could have found out but they didn't and my ultrasound's not until I'm 22 weeks so we have to wait. <laughs> We have to be patient. It's so hard. I'm like, doctors, don't you understand? I have things to craft. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, so I spun the bats, and then I also spun some roll eggs that I had made up um, from domestic wool. So I got a whole bunch of domestic wool with my wheel from Winderwood Farm, and I dyed a bunch of it, and then I took a bunch of it and turned it into roll eggs. So some of them, well, here's some of them that I dyed. So I had some purple and some red fiber that I blended on my blending board into roll eggs and then I spun it up and with this I was just planning worsted weight. You know, I just want to get a nice worsted weight. And I did. It's not the most consistent yarn I've ever spun. I really have a hard time with worsted weight. <laughs> I feel like it's so easy to slip into something that's too thin or slip into something that's too heavy. Um, so, you know, I feel like I need to spin more worsted just for practice, but I do love the colors. Uh, unfortunately, this domestic wool is not very soft, so um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's pretty, right? <laughs> so this ended up being 78 yards out of 1.8 ounces, so it, it's, it's a fat worsted. It's a good, healthy worsted. <laughs> Um, and then also, <laughs> because I've just been participating in Tour de Fleece like crazy, I recently, and this took me the longest of course because it's fingering weight, um, I finished my second two ounces of Gail's art in the stony colorway. Now this is Merino Silk Bamboo, and it's luxury fiber. It is luxury. And uh, with this, I had two ounces that spun up into 220 yards, or no, 223 yards, which I was so excited about because I was afraid. I mean, look how thin it is. I mean, it's a true fingering, maybe even a light fingering weight. And uh, I, was, I was nervous because it was so thin that it wouldn't match the two ounces I spun a long time ago. Now, this one, it might look a little tighter and darker because it's still a little damp. Um, it hasn't finished drying yet. I washed it last night. Um, but if you look, they match pretty well. This two ounces I got um, as the first one, which is all fluffy because it's dry. And uh, But this two ounces I got um, 218 yards. I only got five more yards on this one than I did this one. So they are right where they should be and I am very very pleased because I finished this at least a month or maybe two ago and so I thought maybe I would get a completely different gauge but no. And I, 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 I really 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 attribute how much they match to the savior of my spinning. <laughs> This is um, from Hip Strings. It is one of her spinning gauge tools. So because the first time I spun my Gales Art, I used this fingering weight gauge and I pretty much hit it. So that this time when I went around, all I had to do was try to meet that gauge again and sure enough, I was really close. So without this, I probably would have been a lot more off. Now this isn't the only kind of um, gauge you can use to get an idea of how thin or thick you're spinning and try to recreate what you've already created. There are a whole bunch of different control cards out there, but uh, this is the one that I purchased and I absolutely love it. And if you want to measure your wraps per inch, they give you two whole inches on this card as well. But I really like the engraved um, things because I can just put my single in there and go, oh, for a two-ply, well, I'm filling up about half of that groove, or I'm filling up about a third of that groove. So, um, saved my life. 
Um, so those are all, that's all the spinning that I finished so far during Tour de Fleece, and I have a little less than a week left. I want to at least finish one more skein of something, but uh, I'm probably... I want to finish the other, I still have like six more of these Rolex to spin, so I would like to finish that, but I had to treat myself, of course, for actually spinning every day of the Tour de France, so I went shopping, <laughs> and I bought myself this four ounce braid. <gasps> Are these my colors or what? <laughs> So this braid is four ounces of Falkland from Nitty and Color. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the Sleepy Hollow colorway. And I saw this on her, I think, Etsy store. I think she has an Etsy store. And I was like, oh, I must have. I must have this. <laughs> so um, I went ahead and purchased it. I've never spun Falkland before either, so um, I'm super happy. As far as my plans, I definitely want to try a fractal spin on it because I've never done that before, and I like the way it turns out, and I think that will, it will work well for the way that this was dyed as well. So um, if you've never done a fractal spin or heard of it before, you split the entire braid, is this lengthwise, all the way down and you spin one half straight and then you spin the other half after it's been broken up into a bunch of little chunks and I'm gonna shred I'm going to shred my second half into the tiniest little chunks of color because there's not a very big um, color change between the colors so I'm figuring my first half um, will have short color repeats I want my second half to have like the tiniest little repeats <laughs> and then it is going to be a two ply which, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I'm a real big fan of chain ply for con 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 continuous color, whatever, <laughs> to keep my colors from barber pulling. I really, like, it with this, with this Gale's art, the colors are not barber pulled. They're all kept together, so you'll get a striping effect when you knit it versus the barber pulled effect. But, um... Uh, but I want to try something different, so this will be a two ply instead of my normal three ply, because I usually want chain ply or do a traditional three ply. So two ply, um, depending on what I want to make it into, it would make an awesome shawl. That would I'd probably want it fingering weight, but it would also make an awesome hat, which I would probably want worsted weight. So I don't know yet. I'm still thinking on it, but I probably will end up spinning this during Tour de Fleece as well. <laughs> um, but I've also been doing other spinning projects during Tour de Fleece. I picked up this old project. So this is my very first spindle ever that I got from... Oh, man. I'll put it down here. I don't remember. It was I think it was some sort of alpaca farm. But... Uh, this is my very first spindle, and this is Targi from Mountain Colors Inc. in the Northwind colorway. And I was like contrasting spinning on my wheel versus spinning on my spindle because at the time I was still transi transitioning um, from a spindle to a wheel. And these, this is the first two ounces that I spun on my wheel. Ugh, it's hideous. This was before I figured out tension. <laughs> it's very bulky. It's 60 yards. Um, and this, sh I really should spin it to match, but it does not look bulky, does it? It looks heavy worsted, maybe Erin, but not bulky. So I'm just, I just want to keep it continuous with itself. So I've been spinning on this because I want to, I want to clear the spindle off before I visit home so I can teach my mother-in-law how to spin on a spindle. So... Um, I worked on that, and then I also, where is it? I have so much stuff on the table. I also did some work on um, this guy. So tiny. So this is a supported spindle from Hip Strings. I think it's a, mis a min minstrel? minstrel? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. This is Lindsay's. She's letting me borrow it, and this cotton is hers too, and she's, whoop, that's not spun. 
<laughs> she's letting me borrow that too. And uh, this is just some cotton that she had left over. She had already spun some of it and she said I could spin the rest of it. So um, I've just been practicing supported spinning and drafting cotton because cotton has the shortest staple length in the world. So um, it's been fun to do something different. Um, but it's funny to see the spinning because I'm so used to how consistent my spinning is now. But then looking at this, I'm like, oh, it's like back to square one again. It's just, you know, whenever you learn something new, that's just kind of what happens. So um, lots of spinning in this house. Lots and lots of spinning. So also for current events, um, I've done some work on the 2014 sampler Mystery Knit Along by Marie, Marie Segueras. <laughs> so this, excuse me, is a paid for pattern um, and you get a clue every other week for a square and by the end of the year you'll have enough squares to sew together a nice throw blanket or if you stitch more than one square um, per clue, like if you do two squares, or I'm doing, I'm going to pick six of my favorites and repeat them um, to get a little bit bigger than a throw um, for a baby blanket. But um, I'm up to the most current clue, so if you don't want to see it, fast forward. <laughs> but uh, I, I was behind. So here's one of the squares that I did. We started getting into slip stitch patterns, so um, that's changed quite a bit. There's this one. And then I started on my yellow color because I'm making this into a rainbow blanket. So, woo, white balance there. It's going to turn me blue. <laughs> Thanks, camera. Maybe if I keep it back here. But then you won't see the cute detail. I like this one. Oh, I don't know why it would think that yellow is white. I don't Silly camera. And then this was the most recent square. So, uh, this kind of, I mean, I'm sure to some people they're like, oh, cute. This one, it looks like there's bugs on it to me. I see little beetles. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I did five squares because I was behind, but now I'm caught up. And, um, so I have three more squares until I run out of yellow, and then I'll have to order green. And I'm going to go ahead and order purple, because purple is the color that I'm doing repeats. I'll probably repeat one of each color, so I'll probably pick a red square that I really like the pattern for, and knit it in purple, and then orange and yellow, etc. So, um, so that I can seam it up before baby gets here. Um, Especially it says, because the doctor said that he thinks the baby's going to come a little earlier, so. I don't even know why he said that, but whatever. <laughs> I'm still, I'm not even halfway through my pregnancy. So, how do you know, doctor? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Um, I don't have any current events except to say that um, I might switch to recording every other week. It might be easier for me during this hectic schedule because um, I got put back on nights, um, but then after this week I'll be on days, and then I'll, my schedule will probably change again. Uh, they're just going through a lot of changes, so um, might be another two weeks, two weeks before you see my face again. Um, and then it's episode 40, so every 10 episodes I like to have a little something something at the end of the podcast, and episode 40 really snuck up on me. So I have just a short little video of my cats playing. So I hope you enjoy that um, at the end of the video. Other than that, I hope you guys made something awesome during the show. And I will see you in a week or two. <laughs> Bye!